So I want to compute the area of a particular polar curve, r is cosine of 2 theta. And my first step is almost always going to be to sketch a picture of what this curve actually is. So let's do that as our first step. What does r equal to cosine of 2 theta look like? So what I'm trying to get to is a graph where I express this curve, which is given in polar, and I, I'm able to draw that polar curve on the typical x, y plane. But before I do that, I want to sketch a graph of r as a function of theta. And what I mean by that is I want to draw a graph where on the horizontal we have the argument theta, and on the vertical we have the argument r. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is that I know what this graph looks like. I know what y equals cosine of 2x looks like. So in particular, I know cosine, that graph starts up at 1, goes down to minus 1, and goes back up to 1. Because it's cosine of 2 theta, if I want this equal to 2 pi, that tells me that my theta value is equal to pi. So everything's sort of compressed by this factor of 2. This point where it's minus 1, which is normally at pi, is now going to be at pi divided by 2. The point where it goes to 0, which is normally pi over 2, is now going to be at pi divided by 4, and so on. So now what we want to do is take this information that we know in the r theta axes and try to translate it onto the y x axes. And the idea is that I'm going to start with my theta value equal to 0, and I'm going to let my theta increase, 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 and then the r is going to do whatever this graph here on the left tells me to do. So first of all, I'll note that thetas are going this direction. This is going to be my theta increasing. So right down on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, that's where theta is equal to 0. And what does this formula tell us? When theta is equal to 0, it tells us that r has a value of 1. And then as my theta goes towards pi over 4, what the graph on the left tells me is that my r value goes from 1 and drops down to 0. So I'm going to dot in the line for pi over 4. And while I'm at it, I may as well go and do the same thing for 3 pi over 4, because I'm going to need that in a moment. So what we've deduced was that between theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi over 4, our curve is going from r equal to 1 down to r equal to 0. And so it looks a little bit like this. As I increase, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually goes right down to 0. Then what happens? Then I'm going between the pi over 4 and the pi over 2. So, so then I'm looking in this region here. So now all of my r values are going to be negative. My thetas are now in, in this region here, the going between the pi over 4 and the pi over 2, but all of my r's are going to be negative, and they start at 0 and go down to minus 1. Negative values getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger, and finally ending up at the value of minus 1. Next up, i got to look in this next region here where I'm going from minus 1 back to 0, and now I'm over in this little portion of it. So minus 1 back to 0. This is going to be taking my minus 1 back to 0. There I am. And I carry on with this pattern. You can see whether it fills all in with your mind, but it keeps on going along and makes this really kind of cool four-leafed clover. And I can go a little bit fast here because I've done this once or twice before, but as we carry on with our thetas, this graph that we have, it's going to carry on, and we just keep on filling all of the different portions in. And I always go by another pi over 4. It keeps on alternating between 0 and 1, minus 1, and so on. So I get this really nice graph. Now, I was graphing this because the original question told me to the area. So now I can figure out what is the area that I want to do. It's going to be all of this stuff, and so on. So my final goal is to figure out the entire area here. But I'm going to use a little trick. I'm going to use a little bit of symmetry. I'm going to figure out the area just of this part that I am shading in here. So this looks to me like one-eighth of the entire region. And indeed, it is. The cosine of 2 theta has a lot of symmetry here. There's sort of four petals. They all have the same area. And at the top and the bottom of the petals, at least if I draw them well, which doesn't exactly look like the case here, should also have the same area. So what I'm going to claim is that the area of my half petal times 8 is the entire thing. And now I'm going to focus on how do I figure out the area of this shaded in blue portion. We know a formula for the area. We know that the area is given by the integral between alpha and beta, so two different theta values, of the function of theta squared divided by 2 d theta. 
The f of theta part, that seems quite reasonable. It was given to us. This is just going to be cosine squared of 2 theta all divided by 2 d theta. But the hard part is figuring out what the limits are, figuring out what the theta values are. So let's go back and take a look at the region under consideration, this half leaf. This was formed by theta starting at 0 and going up to pi divided by 4. When we did that initial arc length, that's what we were doing. Theta equal to 0 to theta equal to pi over 4. So 0 up to pi divided by 4. And now this is just a computation. So expanding out, I get this final answer. And if you remember, this was going to be the region just for one eighth of the total thing. And so if I really want to get a truly final answer, that implies that my area is eight times this, and so pi divided by two.